Rappers who could have easily prevented their downfall. Who could have easily prevented their downfall? The baby. A successful rap career but is extremely hard so to on. obtain, yet very easy to destroy. One mistake, one bad album, one tweet could start a ripple effect that leads a rapper to ego fade into irrelevance. Yeah, yeah. Ego Today we are going to look at the stories bad. of rappers whose the career- The thing is, the 6 9 shit, I don't really get how niggas hate that nigga. Cause, if a nigga kidnap my mom, and then kidnap me, I'ma snitch on that nigga, I don't give a fuck. Like, if a nigga kidnap my mom and kidnap me, I'ma snitch on that nigga, bro. I don't know, gang. I really don't give a fuck. Shit. Benny Men really says I hate I show meat BCS he blames Poetl when he dies in F night. What? What bro do again? I think he's Rears dwindled uh, for reasons they likely could have prevented. Starting with Superstar Pride, a rapper who had the fastest Oh shit, this the uh This This uh Mama, don't worry, you uh, it was on me. Uh, yeah, that song. And most ironic rise and fall of all time. Many of you heard Superstar Pride briefly in 2023 when his song Painting Pictures went viral. However, it wasn't necessarily viral for the song, but rather his obscure mullet style haircut. The, the crazy part about this track crazy. is that it was originally uploaded in 2020 and went unnoticed. And mama, don't worry. Then two years later, when he uploaded the live mic performance video to Painting Pictures, it also fell on deaf ears. It wasn't until- Chat, was y'all ever get this haircut or nah? Chat, <laughs> would y'all ever get this haircut or nah? Five months uh, after no. the music video <laughs> dropped, February 2023, no. that Pride casually created a TikTok, posted Never. the music video snippet, and it blew up. The first clip he posted got 10 million views. The second one did over 40 million views. Bro got the Sonic haircut. Bro looked like he got screamed at. Bro's haircut was 50% off. Nobody was talking about the song, just his hair. <laughs> Bro, like he got screamed at. <laughs> Looney Tunes had a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> 50 percent <laughs> yo i ain't gonna lie tiktok comments and instagram comments got it bro those niggas be wild bro. then a viral trend emerged yo. of people imitating his video with something ridiculous taped to the back of their head shit. which could not be outdone when someone managed to get an entire <laughs> airplane strapped to their head the, the opening line mama don't worry was also getting stuck in people's heads mama, which led to the song worry. amassing 160 so million uh, streams on spotify so and over 30 million on youtube painting song, though, pictures shot up to number 25 on the billboard hot 100 and every major label got into a bidding war trying to sign him but he sided with steve Stout and his independent structured music label United Masters. And he wanted like five million dollars from a label. And when they didn't My give bad. him five million, they were offering him three. Mm. He's like, if it ain't five, I'm not signing it. <laughs> I'm like, what? Pride let his ego get the best of him, refusing three million dollars for wanting five million. Three weeks after refusing the record deal. Angola, I hate record deals because you're basically selling your soul. Cause it's like you sign, you sign your contract, you're done for. I seen some shit. Like, I know people. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't like I don't like the music industry. I feel like the music industry is turning into streamers. He was know. arrested for murder. Face is, I miss you think it's gonna be like labels and shit for streamers someday? Is that a thing? Is is there labels for streamers? Is that a thing or no? Mississippi rapper is charged with murder in Panola oh. County. 20-year-old Kadarius Pride, known as Superstar Pride. The victim, oh, Marcus Wheatley, was Pride's barber, likely responsible for his signature hairstyle. Wheatley's grandmother said Pride stormed into their house and gunned him down in the backyard. Currently, why? Pride is being held without bond and doesn't why? have a trial set. Nobody knows what happened or why it happened. But a rapper going viral for his ridiculous what haircut the in February, then allegedly Yo, murdering his barber a few months later after denying $3 million is the most insane self-sabotage I have ever seen. And if you thought Pride's story was a poetically ironic is? form of self-sabotage. Yeah, self -sabotage. Like to put a goddamn sound on him, man. Hey, hey, bro. Y'all pop on this shit when an anime girl fucking on this bitch one day just don't say shit, bro. Hey, man. 
Nigga last name Pry, he gay? Raj, meet Yo. Chance the Rapper, who once famously said, I met Kanye West, I am never going to fail, but still managed to fail. Chance the Rapper's 2013 mixtape, Acid Rap, was universally praised by hip hop fans. To Chance the Rapper? His raspy voice and sprinkle of soul combined with before. his youthful, positive energy made this project a masterpiece. Tracks like Cocoa Butter Kisses and Favorite Song have I aged like fine wine. But Chance was in no rush to capitalize on his buzz. He worked on his next- All I know, bro, is because his fucking hat. Like this nigga never take off his hat. I never see him wow his hat. Like this nigga always got a hat on. Mixtape for three years. He had the whole city of Chicago rooting for him and garnered support from the biggest artists in the world, including Kanye West, who featured Chance on his 2016 album, The Life of Pablo. Chance's part on Ultralight Beam is one of the biggest highlights of the project. Coloring Book was his 2016 mixtape that served as the perfect follow up to Acid Rap. Chance's cadence, soulful lyrics, and euphoric beat selection was unlike anyone else in hip hop at the time, especially on tracks No Problem and All We Got. I just he know the <laughs> <laughs> oh god, <laughs> you're not lying. Benny Menrielli says that Biara got a goofy R hairline and killed the person WHO gave him the goofy hairline. Now that is crazy. That's crazy as shit. Bro, we need a Grammy for streamers. Oh yeah, there is a Grammy for streamers. That uh, streamy shit. What's it called? What's that? Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Hold on. This. Yeah, I gotta give me one of these shits, bro. I gotta give me one of these shits, bro. How 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 do I get this? How do I get this? I gotta be consistent, man. I don't know, bro. This shit fire. Nah, that's it. Me for best new artist. Some, and some people even believed Facts. he could give Drake a run for his money, but then he blew. <gasps> and I'm gonna blow you away when you hear about today's sponsor. What? Lately, I've been obsessed with fantasy play. Responses would whoa dance craze. The song went viral, but when fans criticized it on Twitter, his responses would put a nasty stain on his reputation. People have different tastes, and that's fine. But the way you're talking to fans who have been with you since 10 days disappointing, and that ego reflects on the quality of your newest music. What Either happened? You are a spoiled. What you think about the GTA 6 trailer? Nigga, I'll bust it. That's what the fuck I think about that shit. Shit, I be crying, bro. I don't know. Best trailer I ever seen in my life. Can't wait. Fuck them GTA bitches. Bro. I don't give a fuck about the story, anyways. I just want to see the ass. Shit, man. Hey, everybody got their own motives. Child who thinks artists are making music for you. I never Benny intended Benny for you to really find or like anything I made. If I knew you existed, I would have tried my hardest line. to keep you from it being. It was on <laughs> I got, I say that, I ain't gonna lie. I might have took a screenshot. Nigga, yeah, yeah. Enjoy it. Now go eat it again. Then Chance over and over again told the fan to eat it. This interaction was a far cry from the positive and wholesome Chance the Rapper fans the love. So then he dropped his debut album, <laughs> The Big Day, out, on July 26, 2019. Oh the Big Day was a reference to his wedding day, okay, which he see. was planning during the creation wow. of this album. Chance mentions his wife and family over 20 times on the record, which became a huge meme. And while his intentions were pure, the album simply was not good. I am genuinely feeling... <laughs> I remember this fucking meme. <laughs> it was a fucking TikTok. I don't even... I ain't listen to the album. It was like... I love my kids. I love my wife. I, I, I don't know what that shit was, but that shit had me fucking dying, bro. I, I ain't even listen to this shit, bro. That shit, like that a strong zero on Damn. this record. Fans zero? hated the project as well Damn. and were quick to let him know. On Twitter, Chance would block anyone who poked fun at him or said anything negative about the album. With the influx of hate, he responded with extreme measures. I'm getting this crazy feeling that people want me to end it. These desperate tweets combined with his lazy album would lead to him canceling his 32 city arena tour, saying that he was instead going to focus on spending time with his family, which again oh. sounds understandable, but it was a lie. The tour was actually canceled due to, quote, historically low ticket sales. According to his now ex-manager, Pat Corcoran, Chance fired his manager then blamed him for fan disappointment in the big day and underwhelming fan support for its associated tour. Corcoran would go on to file a lawsuit in November of 2020 against Chance the Rapper for breach of contract, stating that he is owed over $2.5 million in reimbursed expenses yes. for supporting and promoting Chance's Damn. career, an additional $3 million for unpaid commissions, and 15% of Chance's 
Chance's net profit across Damn. all business earnings. The lawsuit also revealed that Chance started working on his album in February of 2019, which was only five months before it was released. His manager knew there was not enough time for the creative process that was involved in releasing an album. Chance's recording efforts were compromised by unproductive and undisciplined studio sessions, procrastination, and lackadaisical effort, which explains why there are terrible lyrics throughout this record. That's crazy as shit, cause if Drake, bro, Drake could release an album right now, he could record that shit one day. And I'll fuck with that shit. Cause it's Drake, man. I don't know. Drake got like that type of aura to him, man. Like, it's different with Drake, cause Drake is a real rapper, bro. He could he could like he could get down with that shit, man. I don't know. Record. If you blink it, you might miss it. You gotta click it or tick it. Life is short as a midget, but mine's a little LeBron. And how could we forget? Peanut butter jelly with a baseball bat. Peanut butter jelly with a peanut butter jelly. Y'all ain't ready for the jelly to break y'all back. Chance let his own ego squander his career. He couldn't just admit that he made his fans wait three years for a bad album that was rushed out in five months. And the way he responded to them on Twitter was just childish. From here, all his hype died. On Damn. the other hand, if he stepped out of the limelight to genuinely focus on his family, that's respectable. Maybe that's something we should celebrate rather than see as a downfall. But Chance wasn't the only There's rapper no whose Twitter really fingers seriously. started their downfall. Yo. In the case of OG Mako, he pretty much forced everyone to hate him because of his tweets. In 2014, OG Mako had a ton of momentum after his song You Guessed yes, It went viral on Vine. This Yo, track I swear to God, chat, y'all be bullshit. Yo, what the fuck, y'all? was unlike said, anything we had ever heard at the time. Before mumble rap took over, we had OG Mako screaming insane ad-libs over the most simplistic, hard-hitting trap beat. He had a darker, more rock-like aesthetic and even called himself him not a rapper, but a rock star. The song reached number 90 on the Billboard Hot 100, and he could even be credited with inspiring many rappers after him. It definitely inspired Keith Ape, who just released a track called It G Ma that sounded suspiciously similar. Just listen to them at the same time. Oh, never mind. I heard this shit. OG Mako tweeted, I'm aware of the Koreans that mocked me and took my sauce. I'm not impressed. I'm not inspired. I think it's kind of lame. To each his own. Mako even accused Beyonce of stealing from him and her 7-Eleven music video. If you look at them side by side, he may have a point. But Mako was developing a reputation of a bitter, egotistical rapper who complains on the internet. He randomly took shots at his... So, everybody downfalls is because they're egos. Why do people have so much egos? I don't get this shit. Why do rappers have so much egos? Yeah, Meme is finally back. I ain't see this nigga in like a good month. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't, I ain't see this nigga Meme in a good month, bro. It's always the ego. A nigga ask for Mod again. <laughs> Yo. Oh my God. My fucking stubby hurt, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Yo, okay. Chat. It's always the egos, bro. It's always the egos. And I'm I'm noticing that for streamers too. Like streamers, streamers, streamers got like some egos and they fucking ruin their career too. It's like it's always egos. You gotta be nice to everybody, bro. Collaborators and label mates. Unless they like a dickhead, they don't have to be nice to them. But shit. The Migos. Mako felt the need to tell everyone that Skippa to Flippa invented the dab dance that the Migos were using in the song Pipe It Up, to which the Migos replied, The Flippa man is Migo family. OG Mako, let's see you set a trend. Then Mako. What is this? Nigga, we already seen it. Bro, okay, y'all, latest shit. We already, we already just seen it, bro. We already seen the trailer, bro. We already seen it, bro. We already seen it. God damn. 36 minutes, 2.2 million likes? Damn, oh my god, oh my. Echo said, half the rap game has Yo, already yeah, bit GTA one of my flows or app, calling him a hypocrite since he rapped approaching the hearing for the murder. Nah, bro, TK, bro, TK would have been big right now, bro. TK infamously tweeted that he was tired of house arrest and the police were going to have to hunt him down. TK would have been big if he ain't do some bullshit, bro. He would have, damn, why he do that? Um, while on the run from the police, TK was very active on social media. Fans posted pictures and videos of him in public. But TK and his friends were desperate for money. He robbed a 65-year-old man named Skip Pepe at gunpoint in Arlington's Craven Park. He then attempted to rob a cameraman named Mark Anthony Saldivar in a Chick-fil-A parking lot. Mark began screaming for help as he tried- Was it Tech the one who killed his bro? Nigga, that's Lil Mel- Why- Wait, why ain't W Melly? 
pretty sure to escape then take a hit him with the car before getting out fatally shooting him and driving off san antonio police connected take a to the murder due to surveillance footage and posted wanted signs around the city take a saw this as a marketing opportunity posting pictures and videos with the wanted sign he then dropped a song called the race on soundcloud which essentially told right, the story of him being a fugitive right, yeah. robbing and killing people while on the run from the police after filming and releasing the music video to the race take a was captured by u.s marshals in elizabeth New Jersey. The shockingly true story led to the 17-year-old exploding in virality. The race secured hundreds of millions of views on YouTube, reached number 44 on the Billboard so Hot 100, the Holocaust? and hashtag Free TK became a movement supported awesome. by some of the biggest rappers in the game. He even signed a $700,000 record deal, uh, uh, but none of it mattered because he was behind uh, bars. Uh, uh, and in 2019, uh, uh, he was given a 55-year sentence after being found yeah, guilty so of potential. murder. You, you notice the niggas who's like not really in the streets? get way farther in the rap game because they're actually smart as shit and don't do no dumb shit. Like, <clears throat> like, like game. The niggas who like, it's like chill, you know, get way farther than the niggas who's like, you feel me? That's why I feel like, that's why I feel like, you know what I'm saying? You just gotta chill, bro. Niggas ran around killing niggas. And three counts of aggravated robbery. Obviously, TK's downfall could have been prevented if he simply did not commit these heinous acts. But as bad as it sounds, none of us would even know about him if he didn't actually rob and murder people, then make songs about it while mocking the police on the run from the law. Rap fans glamorize this type of behavior because the music is, a lot of the time, violent and derogatory. So if you're gonna rap about it, fans want you to be about it. But the fans won't be the ones sitting in the jail cell. Shiesty is an example of someone who was heavily rewarded for his violent music. His song Back in Blood featuring Lil Durk was essentially a song about killing songs. your enemies. This I track would reach number 37 good on the songs. Billboard Hot 100 and secured himself as a promising new talent in hip hop. But at this peak of his new career, he got arrested. Who Shiesty and somebody his crew in the were at the King of Diamonds strip club in Miami, Florida. Allegedly, Shiesty had money taken from him which led to major commotion in the club. Security acted accordingly and escorted Poo Shiesty out of the club, but he forced his way back into the club and accidentally fired a handgun at a working security guard. Poo Shiesty turned himself in on June 8, 2021 and had his hearing the following day, where he would be denied bond. He would later be sentenced to five years and three months in prison on April 20th, 2022. He could have easily Damn. just left the club and let others go handle the money situation, but maybe he felt the need to live up to his back in blood lyrics. I got my own fire, don't need security in the club. If you haven't noticed, rappers and shootings seem to be a very common trend that leads to their downfall. Tory Lanez is no different. However, many people still question if he is actually guilty of being the shooter. In 20 It's actually crazy as shit. They, uh... They gave him so I don't feel like they didn't have that much evidence. I don't get this shit. Like that shit weird to me. I don't know, bro. I I'm not on both sides. I'm not on any sides, but this shit like niggas did way. I don't know. 2020, Tory Lanez was at the peak of his career. His feature on Jack Harlow's What's Poppin' reached number two on the Billboard Hot 100 while objectively being the best verse. His album, The New Toronto 3, debuted at number two on the Billboard 200. He broke the record for the most live viewers in an Instagram Live during his quarantine radio show during the pandemic. However, on July 12, 2020, he was arrested on a felony gun charge while out with Megan The Stallion after attending a small party at Kylie Jenner's house. The public was also informed that Megan had cut her foot on broken glass. Then three days later, she changed her story to say that she was shot in the foot. Then one month later, she said this. Yes, this nigga Tory shot me. You shot me. And you got your publicist and your people going to these blogs lying and Stop lying. Social media immediately took Megan's side. Tory remained silent about the allegations, but responded with lyrics on his album, Daystar. How the fuck you get shot in your foot and don't hit no bones or tendons? How the fuck your team is trying to paint me as a whole menace? Delusional, like how that 1942 from Kylie House still got you talking crazy, as well as also rapping about why he hasn't been nearly as vocal as Meg. Think I'm finna talk about an open case for some likes? Tory Lanez was charged with one count of assault with a semi-automatic firearm and one count of carrying a loaded, 
reported unregistered firearm in October of 2020. Although Tory claimed he was being blackballed by the music industry, his career continued to thrive. He released four albums independently, which would all garner hundreds of millions of streams. He received praise from LeBron James as well as dozens of other mainstream acts. Fans believed if it wasn't for this case, he would have been toe to toe with the biggest rappers in the game. But once we finally got the information from this trial, we would end up with more questions than answers. On July 12, 2020, Tory Lanez, his bodyguard Megan Thee Stallion, and her friend Kelsey Harris were attending a small gathering at Kylie Jenner's house. Megan testified that she lied to the police about the glass, lied to doctors, and basically lied about the entire situation out of fear. Her new story was pretty simple. She said that they had an argument, she exited the car, Tory leaned out of the passenger side door, said, dance bitch, and shot her from 25 feet away in the back of the foot. Then Tori ran up to her apologizing and she got back into the car so they could give her a ride home. The cops arrived when the neighbors reported the gunshots. Tori chose not to testify and defend himself, which he would later regret. Kelsey, Meg's friend, testified that Tori was trying to hook up with Kylie Jenner and Meg tried to convince him to leave the house. Meg was upset that Tori didn't want to leave, so she got into the car with Kelsey and drove almost all the way home before realizing she forgot her slipper and went back to Kylie's. They grabbed Tori the second time after Kylie allegedly told them to leave. In the car is when Tori admitted that he and Megan had been in a romantic relationship. Kelsey was shocked because Megan was the one who hooked up Tori and Kelsey in the first place. Kelsey also admitted that this was not the first time Meg had backdoored her when it came to men. Now we have a love triangle and this is how the argument started. But Kelsey pleaded the fifth when it came to speaking about anything regarding the gun or shooting. The government views wondered since the yeah, when crazy, Tori was it? initially uh, jailed, he called Kelsey. Uh, yeah, yeah. I feel like I feel like some shit is like egos, bro. It's egos, bro.